Hey there, Jed Corbin is here with the Exercise Physiology Show. Um, I am an exercise physiologist. I am a former fat kid, and I completely understand where many people are coming from, chronic pain to uh, mental illness to um, mental health, okay, because there's a difference, um, in just everyday life, okay. Uh, I have an exercise science degree, I have certifications, all that fun stuff. I record in the car because I find that uh, this is when I have time, okay? This is when I have time to do this and we all don't have time, right? Don't have time in quotes because we're all busy, okay? We all leave, we all live very, very, you know, productive lives, so that's why I create daily wads, workout of the days, and here we go. Um, <clears throat> I got a, had a question yesterday about BMI and body fat percentage. I don't know if many people know that um, or understand the difference, but I feel like it's my place to, um, to let you in on what that means. Uh, when I go to the doctor, to the annual physical, my BMI is pretty close to obese, um, but my body does not reflect that. Um, BMI is just height and weight, and it gives you a number of what that is. It puts you in a chart, like I'm 5'9 at 185, usually is what I am when I hit the dock. Um, and that's, you know, I like guess around 29 or whatever. But my body fat percentage uh, is around 10 to 12%. Okay, so I'm nowhere near obese. Um, BMI, the insurance companies, I'm not saying, don't, let's not even get started on the insurance companies, but um, what I mean by that is body fat percentage reflects way more, um, more detail about your body than BMI. Um, because when you're looking at BMI, it only, it only matters if you're 50% or more body fat, because after 50%, there isn't much, you know, you can really test for as far as um, progress. So you'd need BMI, and we're getting close to that here in America. You know, people being 50% body fat or more. So now BMI actually makes sense for that population, for that type of, or the body type, but as far as body fat percentage, so what that is, is, so you take 10%, let's say I'm at 185 at 10%, okay, so 10%, so 18 and a half pounds of body fat is what I'm carrying around. That's not bad, you know, I'll take it. Uh, because your internal organs have to have body fat, right? So 3% of that, I know this is a lot of numbers, but 3% um, is the minimum your body can have. You can never have less than 3%. I shouldn't say never because, you know, there's anomalies out there, but most of the time it's, it's, it's 3%, okay? That's like, um, you know, Michael Jordan in his prime or Danica Patrick or... Um, the athletes, right? Um, Adrian Peterson, you know, Brett Favre in his prime. Um, any any actor, whatever you want to do, throw it out there. But that's what it is. Is it's the that's the mass. It's the tissue that you carry. So the reason I bring that up is because I think a lot of people get hung up on weight and height, there's the steering wheel. Um, I think a lot of people get caught up on weight and height and and then, oh my gosh, I'm not losing weight, so I must be losing inches. Or if you're not losing inches, inches and you're not losing weight, okay, means you're not doing anything. Like weight itself, that's not gonna do it for you. Because if you're losing weight, that's fine. But you should also be losing inches. 
Man, was, this is just a crazy topic, and I'm glad, glad Kathy, right, she asked me yesterday. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very fine line because as soon as you're losing inches and you're losing pounds, you got to figure it out. And then if you're only losing inches and not losing pounds, it means your body's probably going through some kind of a, a shift in tissue that you carry because you're losing body fat and you're gaining muscle. And then if you're not losing inches and you're not losing pounds um, and your pants still fit the same and you're working out like crazy, it means your eating needs to change. Okay, It means you need to take it to the next step with your eating patterns. And it doesn't matter what size you are, if I wanted to get to 5% body fat, I have to take the next step and get um, in my eating. Because my exercise, you know, really it's 80% nutrition, 10% exercise or movement, right? What you do, 10% what you do, and it's about 10% genetics. 10% genetics, that's it. 80% nutrition. It is what you put in your mouth. It is literally what you're putting in your mouth, okay? And I haven't always been on the receiving end of that because till about a year ago, I was trying to out-exercise a poor diet and it sucks, right? I mean, you, you, you work so hard in a gym or you work so hard at home and you're like, man, I'm working out, but I'm not seeing any results. Well, it's what you eat. It is literally just that. And I know I went a whole bunch on body fat and BMI, but it really is as simple as that. It's as simple as what you eat. If you put energy in your body, you have to burn it off. If you put energy in your body that your body knows what to do with or fuel, what your, your body knows what to do with, your body will use that and get rid of it a lot faster. Meaning like fresh food. If you're eating foods that have an expiration date of five years from now, I know that's a little extreme, let's say two years from now, your body probably doesn't know what to do with that because there's a lot of chemicals in that food to keep it fresh or to keep it good, if you will. So if you have foods that are fresh, maybe three month or six month expiration days at most, and then, you know, your fresh fruits, vegetables, uh, meats, stuff like that probably won't last much more than a week or two. Um, yeah, your body knows what to do with that, and then you can take it to the next, you know, level, that whole level. Take it to the next dream or vision or goal that you have. Um, it comes down to feeling good, right? I'm addicted to actually feeling good. Like if I have a bowl of ice cream, I know I'm actually gonna feel quite a bit hungover. Like, that's kinda how I feel. The next day, if I have a whole big bowl of ice cream, I'm to the point where I feel hungover. Like I just drank alcohol, a whole bunch of it. Like drank a bunch of beers. And, ugh. Like, cloudy mind the works so yeah um, the other one would be like a little tidbit from last night um, yesterday whatever it'd be honey instead of syrup it was awesome I gave it a shot I'm like whoa um, Ashley had asked me hey not my wife but you know my wife's name is Jessica but Ashley um, not awesome, but awesome, right? Got it right this time. She had asked, well, what do I put on, um, what do I put on pancakes or waffles, whatever, right? We actually had waffles for supper. And, um, it was, I put peanut butter and honey on there, and it was good. And make sure it's all natural honey. Don't buy the really, really junk, because then it, you don't even know what's in that, too, so... Yeah, just a little tidbit. All right, that was, uh, that's the show right there. I really appreciate everybody who's taking the time to work on you, because you have to work on you before you can work on others, okay? You have to believe in yourself before you believe 
helping other people. So you gotta know by now, you have to know by now that I believe in you. If you're willing to change from the neck up, you will change from the neck down. I'm gonna throw out another question today, right at the end. Question for today is, what is your biggest achievement, you would say, in your life so far? Have a great day. Bye for now.